My first stop was Cozy Baggett Jewett, whose residence, Blithfield Hall, is one of the locations visited by the horn dancers each year. The Baggett family have a long history here, arriving with William the Conqueror in 1066 and in continuous residence of Blithfield since the 14th century. They once owned 11,000 acres, which included part of the village of Abbots Bromley, and even have their own breed of goat. So, Cozy, how many generations of Baggett family have lived here at Blissfield Hall? Um, we think about 22 generations. Uh, Rafe Baggett married Elizabeth de Blissfield in 1360. Yeah. She was the girl next door, and he moved in from Baggett's Bromley to Blithfield then, so it's from 1360 up till now, so a fair few years anyway. <laughs> so how do you normally spend Horn Dance Day? Fairly flat out really, I don't get to see much of the dance as I'd like, it's trying to juggle really the getting the children to and from school plus the um, entertaining because we have the horn dancers have lunch here plus it's a lovely opportunity to have friends and family here for lunch as well. It's normally lunch for about 65 people which I do myself with perhaps a little bit of help but it's fairly busy and then normally it's suddenly it's 12 o'clock and the horn dancers are we, we never know quite when they're coming it's sort of sometime between 12 and half past so we've got to make sure lunch is ready by 12 and um, and then try and get out to the front of the house to, to actually watch them arrive and dance and also talk to our friends that have come to see it The estate, parts of which date from the early medieval period, boasts an orangery, a church and rectory, stables and a coach house. Blithfield today is divided into a number of different properties, but the family has retained some fine examples of architectural splendour and design within the main part of the house. This is the Great Hall, with this amazing fan vaulted ceiling. Um, this is with the original medieval hall, it would have looked very different in the old days. This was a stucco dressing that was put on about 200 years ago by the second lord. Behind the plaster dressing are the big old oak beams and holding up the ceiling. So eight foot above this ceiling is the old oak ceiling up there, the huge big timbers holding it up. There's sort of soot and stuff on the middle beams at the top. So originally the fire would have been in the middle. We, I believe the Elizabethans extended the house, so every generation added on, 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 added on a bit, yeah. added on a bit. Yeah. Will you tell us all about these uh, coat of arms? Well, as you can see, we've got this lovely set of them above the fireplace. Um, can you see with three martlets and the red chevrons, that's the Baggett coat of arms. Right. And the black and white zigzag sawtooth on the right, that's the de Blissfield coat of arms. So that's when they, the families married and the Baggots came to Blithfield. And you can see either side of the fireplace we've got the, the horns. These are the red deer antlers. And then at each end of the hall we've got the Baggot goat horns as well. The Baggot goats have been in the family since the 1300s. And um, they say that when the goats die out so does the family. Really? Which is a bit alarming because there are only 97 registered nanas left with the Rare Breed Survival Trust, so I hope they keep going. Blithfield had fallen into disrepair when Carol, the sixth Lord Baggett and his wife Nancy, who is the present Lady Baggett, took over the estate in 1946. Nancy graciously agreed via audio interview to share her memories of the horn dance back then. those days, uh, they used to walk across the, the fields here, 
now the, uh, the reservoir, so they, they don't. The first I heard was this tinkling of the triangle that, that uh, one of the little boys hit in time to, to their walking. The first thing you, you saw coming up out of the mist were the tips of the antlers, and that, gradually they all appeared. Nobody took any notice of it. Um, there was nobody here except us. In her book, Blithfield Hall, A Country House Saved, Lady Baggett reveals how in 1936, Gerald, the fifth Lord Baggett, agreed to sell the entire estate to the South Staffordshire Waterworks Company so that they could dam the River Blyth that ran through here then and create this reservoir. World War II disrupted the plan, but when it ended, the water company pursued the agreement. The house was sold to the water company just at the end of the war, we thought it would probably be the last time we would see the horn dance, certainly at Bluefield. But in April 1946, Gerald Baggett died, passing both the title and the estate to Nancy and Carol. The agreement with the water company, however, was binding and completed in December 1947. Given only three months to vacate the property, the new Lord and Lady Baggett asked the trustees to begin negotiations with the water company to buy back the hall and 30 acres of the land. This they achieved in March 1948, without having had to leave Blithfield. Come and have a look upstairs, Jane. Have you ever taken part in the horn dance? No, I haven't actually, but my husband has. He had to go about eight years ago. He had to go carrying the horns and saying how terribly heavy they were. Um, we had the horn dancers here a couple of weeks ago doing a, a demonstration dance for a fundraising event we were doing for the church. And they then let some other people practice with the horns as well. So they gave a dance to show us how it's properly done. And then they got members of the people that were watching the guests for the hog roast to carry the horns and have a dance themselves. This is the library with its Elizabethan panelling. In the library hangs the portrait of Mrs Salisbury with her grandchildren, Edward and Elizabeth Baggett. The original is now part of the Tate Collection and is one of six family portraits commissioned in 1675 by Sir Walter Baggett from the British artist John Michael Wright. In 1945, however, many of the heirlooms from Blithfield were sold off, including the six portraits. Through subsequent years, Lady Baggett attempted to buy back some of the works, but Mrs Salisbury was simply too expensive. Perhaps as a way of compensating the family, the Tate agreed to let them have a copy. This is a Chinese room, but it's hand-painted Chinese wallpaper. And we think it was put up probably in the mid-1700s. It looks like a tapestry. Amazing, isn't it? William, the first Lord Baggett, this chap here, was great friends of Admiral Anson from Shugborough. And we know that Admiral Anson went to China on a five-year trip. So it may well be that Admiral Anson bought some wallpaper back for his mate next door at Blithfield. I think that it's important to keep the tradition of the horn dance alive. Yes, I do. I think it's, I think it, I think it's a fantastic event. It brings the community together um, and it's just rather fun and, you know, to live in an area where there's such an original event that happens every year. Most people are amazed when you have to explain about the horn dance and a lot of people haven't seen it yet but I'm hoping that more will come in the future. Do you think that it will survive the passing of time? Yes, yes, I think it will. I mean, 
it's lasted several hundred years already, and it's very much it seems to me that there's very much a progression um, part of it. You've got the little um, there's a young boy with a triangle, so I guess he his ambition is to progress up to being one a, a horn carrier, you know, later on in life. And I, I suppose it's been going on hundreds of years already, so there's no re no real reason to see why why it should stop. And the support for it in the village seems to be growing every year. There's more and more people coming to see it. So I think, and I hope it will carry on.